Hi everybody, this video goes along with lesson 2.1 multiplication combinations in unit one of investigations. Before we get started talking about multiplication combinations, I want to do some quick images with you. I'm going to flash a picture up on the screen. It's got a bunch of dots. I want you to figure out how many dots are there without counting each one individually. All right, you're going to have three seconds to look at it real quick. You might want to draw a picture, you might want to make an equation, or think of some other way to help you remember how many numbers there are. Remember, don't count by ones. Get ready, get set, go. All right, you should have something in mind. Let's check and see. Look again at the picture and see if you're right. So what'd you come up with? If he said 20, you were right. There are a group of four, group of four, group of four, group of four, and a group of four. That tells us that we had four times and there were five groups. Five groups of four equals 20. All right, let's try another one. You ready? Get ready. Get set, go. All right, what did you think? How many were there? Do you have a picture in your mind? Let's see if you're right. Get ready, get set, go. All right, how many people said 20? If you said 20, you were absolutely right again. So now let's see, we've got a group of five, we've got another group of five, another group of five, and another group of five. That tells me that we had um, four groups of five equals oops, 20. All right, remember, multiplication is commutative, uh, which means you can write the problem forwards and backwards, and it doesn't change the answer. All right. Let's go on to multiplication combinations. When I was growing up, the hardest problem for me to remember was 6 times 9, 9 times 6. I could never remember this. So I want to show you a strategy that I wish my teacher would have showed me when I was growing up. So I've got an array here. I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 as my dimension on this side. And then I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 on this side. So what I'm going to be asking you to do is break up one of these numbers, not both, one, either the six or the nine, to help you get smaller problems to make it easier to multiply. Let me show you what I mean with a picture. So what I did right here is I've got two smaller arrays that equal the same thing as my big array. You see how they lay right on top, the green one and the yellow one? Well, this one is my 6 by 9. So how much is each of these? Well, over here I have 1, 2, 3, and then I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 on this side. So I've got 3 times 9 for this one. Let's see, is this one the same size? Yeah, it sure is. So I've got 3 times 9 for both of these. So let me just write in the equation. 3 times 9 equals, and I know that is 27. And then I've got another 3 times 9. 3 times 9 equals 27. All right, so now, how does that help us with this big problem, 6 times 9? Well, I'm going to show you. Let's put these two together so that when I move them, they line right up. All right, so there's my first one. I've got three times nine. You'll notice I've got three more blocks left down on the side where the six was. Whoops. Let me group these guys together so I can drag them all at one time. All right, so there. Now I've got three times nine and three times nine equals 27. So I know that if I add the three and the three, I'm going to get the six. And they're all groups of nine, so the nine doesn't change. So in order to get the answer, all I got to do is add 27 and 27. Let me show you how to write that as an equation. 
I've got 3 times 9 equals 27. Then I have another 3 times 9, and that equals 27. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this into an addition problem. There's my addition line, not the line I would have chosen. And then I'm going to add my plus sign right here. So I am adding 3 times 9 plus 3 times 9. Well, notice that the 3 I broke down, the 9 stayed the same, so then I add the 27s. So now notice the 9 stay the same, so I've got my 3 and my 3. That's going to give me 6 times 9, because it's still groups of 9, and that's going to equal 54. So let me just line it up so the colors line up. So I added the 3 and the 3, that gave me the 6. The 9 stayed the same because they were groups of 9. 27 and 27 add together to equal 54. So let's try another one. This was, is another hard problem. First, let's figure out the dimensions. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So my dimensions here are 12. And then on the other side, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this array represents 12 times 8. So I love doing problems like this that have double digit numbers because it's super easy to break the 12 into 10 plus 2. So I'm going to break this into an array that break the 12 into an array that's 2 and 10. So I'm going to go ahead and get a line and I'm going to draw a line right down here. Because now I have my 2 right here, so this one must be 10. So I've made two separate arrays. Let me show you what I mean by that. Here I'm drawing a red line around this array, which is 2 times 8. And so if this is 2 times 8, I know that. That's an easy problem to do. Oops. Whoa. Here we go. 2 times 8. Why aren't you rotating? Oh, i got to click the arrow. Okay, 2 times 8. So that equals 16. So this one that I have left over here, I'm going to draw a blue box around. This is going to be 10 times 8 because I already have the 2. So in this box, I've got 10 times 8. Because remember, I still have 8 going down the side here, but now instead of 12, I have 10. So I know my 10 times tables, 10 times 8 equals 80. So now, what do you do? Well, I'm going to add them up. Let me get this equation out of here so we don't get confused. All right, so now I've got my two equations. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start adding them up. I have my 2 times 8 which I know equals 16. So I'm going to add my 10 times 8, which I know equals 80. And in order to do that, I've broken the 12 down. So now I have my, my 10 plus my 2 is going to give me my 12. I'm timesing it by 8 because they're all groups of 8. So now, in order to get my answer, all I have to do is add my 16 and my 80. So 80 plus 16 equals 96. So I know that I have the correct answer. Now remember, I'm only breaking apart one number. Notice these numbers right here, 2 plus 10, equal each other. And then the same thing happens on this side. The 16 plus the 80 equals the 96. So what problems are hard for you? I want you to start thinking about which ones are difficult. Come up with two, three, four, five problems that are really hard for you. Now it's your turn. 
Here's the practice problems for tonight's homework. Use the strategy on the video to help you solve the practice problems below 9 times 7, 12 times 6, and 16 times 4. I tried to give you one that was higher than 12, so you really had to think about how to use the strategy.